Hello everyone, uh, I'm Charles Litchfield, the Deputy Director of the Geo Economic Centre here at the Atlantic Council and I'm here with Bob Zellick, uh, to whom we're very grateful because we've just nabbed him from a very good session on uh, Ukraine's reconstruction, making that sustainable, potentially using Russia's uh, blocked assets. Uh, and we've taken him into our more intimate setting of the studio to ask him about President Biden's choice for the new president of uh, the World Bank. So Ambassador, uh, Ambassador Zellick, you're a former president of the World Bank. What do you think of this choice? Um, I think it's an excellent choice, and um, many people in the developing world will know his business background. Uh, so he obviously he's well uh, acquainted with the world of finance. He's run a global international organization with MasterCard. But what I hope they also <coughs> will recognize is that <coughs> as an individual, he's, in he's inquisitive, he's interested in the issues of development, he worked on financial inclusion issues when, when he was at, uh, at MasterCard. And, um, you know, many people don't recognize that while the United States nominates, others have to make their own decisions. And uh, I think he will probably uh, make an effort to go internationally, mm -hmm. to talk to people, to listen, to learn about what they have to say, which is exactly the, the right thing to do. I think when he reaches out to various audiences, obviously climate is a very important issue for developed countries. For many developing countries, climate is important, but they're worried that it will dwarf other issues of resilience, questions of, of dealing with pandemics, dealing with high food prices and others. And I think Ajay is sensitive to this and be able to sort of pull things together. He, we served together on the Tomasic Board, a sovereign wealth fund of Singapore, so I had some chance to see him in that context as well as knowing from his business background. And he's quite an unusual CEO. Sometimes the CEOs will sort of, after they're successful, as he certainly was, you know, they'll kind of act a little bit in an imperial fashion. And that's not his nature. I mean, you know, he, he grew up in India, went to university in India. He is truly somebody that has an international perspective. And I think that's also important for guiding the World Bank. The World Bank has a lot of talented people. It's got, you know, 190 different nationalities. To be effective, you, you need to push, you need to have some priorities, but at the same time, you need to be able to find the strengths of an organization that rep has people from all over the world. You need to work with governments, but you also need to work with non-governments. I was discussing, Ajay, with Gail Smith, who runs One, who's been very effective in this, had been a former USAID director. She had the same sense I do, and so she'll be able to sort of bring other types of networks. So I think also, you know, at this point in time, we know these institutions always have to adapt to the challenges. And, you know, we not only have the normal international economy challenges, but you've got issues of Ukraine, you've got issues of food and energy and other topics, oceans and, and other types of questions. And I think he has the intellectual breadth to pull together the World Bank staff, but also different components in the international system. And the reason why that's critical is while the World Bank in a good year may be able to devote 60, 70 billion dollars of resources through different ways, private sector, IDA for the poorest, IBRD, MEGA, insurance, um, that's a drop in the bucket in terms of international amounts. And so the real question is how you can be a catalyst. So when I was at the World Bank in the global financial crisis, we also had the food crisis. And so we catalyzed action on that. And so I think Ajay's got the personality, the temperament, the sort of curiosity to do that. And the key will be, of course, the steps that I think he'll probably take to try to build international support. So I, I hope it will help strengthen the World Bank. Uh, he's got a good partner in Kristalina Georgieva, the former, the former World Bank colleague of mine who's now at the IMF. And I think together this is exactly the moment for those two institutions maybe also with the WTO, uh, Ngozi Akanja, Wela, to kind of sort of help the G20 system. Cool. Thank you, Ambassador Zelik, uh, for those insights. A uh, few little hints at what the challenges might be for Ajay Banga, uh, if indeed he, his nomination becomes uh, the presidency. So uh, thank you so much for your My insights. My pleasure to be with you. And thank you for listening.